Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, where we have Akonde criticizes Tinubu and Shetima's simultaneous foreign trips. Olaolo Akonde, a former presidential spokesman, criticized President Tinubu and Vice President Shetima for being abroad at the same time, suggesting it's not ideal for governance. Akonde emphasized the importance of one leader being on the ground to manage governance, citing trust issues that could arise from such simultaneous trips. While President Tinubu is on a two-week work leave in the UK, Shetima left for Sweden for bilateral engagements, both remaining involved in national affairs remotely. Akonde pointed out that during his time in office, such simultaneous absences rarely occurred, stressing the need for better coordination between the president and vice president. Now, joining us to talk about this is Biodun Shawomi, is a, is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can okay, hear you. Good fantastic. morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right. So basically, I think what this statement is about is um, vacuum in governance, really. Um, but from your own opinion, from your perspective, do you think that this criticism is valid, especially with what we're going through in Nigeria? We know that we're going through economic challenges. We're going to, through security challenges. There's so much going on. Yes, both the president and the vice president are not in town and they're working remotely. Do you think the criticism is valid? Uh, well, um, yes, to some extent, um, Laulu is right uh, in the sense that it's not the norm not to have. I wouldn't use ID. It's not the norm mm. not to have the president and the vice president within the country at the same time. Uh, for instance, in um, countries where, for instance, in nuclear power countries, if situations could arise, uh, in a way that certain decisions need to be taken in national interest. For instance, uh, um, who has the nuclear button uh, it has to be within reach. And uh, because of that, you don't have that in those countries. Um, so to a large extent, it's not the norm not to have the president in the country and the vice president at the same time. But in Nigeria, we have also evolved a system where you have uh, a dual presidency. What do I mean by that? Is you have what they call the president, and then you have what they call the presidency. Uh, so therefore, we've seen situations where um, if the president is not reacting directly to an issue, you have the president reacting to issues. So uh, within that context, um, you have the president um, on a two-week working trip, mm -hmm. while at the same time, the vice president is off to Sweden. So the presidency at home is in charge. Um, basically, what it means is that those who are running the presidency, who are running the affairs of the country within the presidency, um, although not voted or elected to Sweden, mm -hmm. but we have created that situation in a way that they are the ones uh, really in charge while the president and the vice president are in here. But that is not the norm, but it's a thing that we have created here. Okay. Where you have, I remember Ruben Abati once mentioned it, to say that there's something in the president, um, even though there's a president. Mm -hmm. We keep so, on talking so, about Kabbalah, even when so who are these, there. Yeah. So who are these people the, in the presidency that could still um, engage the affairs of the country? Because I want to understand the chain of command. If we have the president away, the, the vice president away, so who's, who's next? Who, what happens if there's an emergency? What happens if something, <laughs> something crazy, in fact, or even though we can say a lot has happened that is crazy right now because we're looking at our economy that is so, so critical at the moment, um, and we're in a crisis crisis but what happens if something else should come up what is the chain of command who are these people in the presidency that we know can handle the affairs of our nation yeah but we have seen people we've seen reactions uh, including the presidency commenting that there's no va vacuum in governance mm. even as the president and the vice president uh, are away uh, th th that's those are the people in the presidency they are unelected people 
they are more or less appointed people, appointees of the pre uh, president, mm. who are taking certain decisions on his behalf or on uh, in the best interest of the nation. And as far as I can see, it, 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 they are not elected. They are not democratically elected by the people. They are not supposed to be um, directly in charge in the way it's appearing for them. Um, what the ideal thing, what would, should be the ideal thing, is for the president or the vice president to be on ground. Yeah. And even where you have the vice president on ground and the president is leaving the country, uh, I mean, for such a long period, he should ordinarily have handed over, you know, to the vice president, you know, so that he's fully in charge of the day-to-day -day affairs of the country while the president is away. But if you look at how the presidency, you know, portrayed the trip, uh, we are told that the trip of the president is a two-week uh, working trip. Yeah, working, working trip working. means he's still on duty. No, he it says work uh, leave. Uh, it says work leave. That's what it says, work leave. Yes, work leave. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. It's a work trip that is out of the country on a work leave. And that is, he's still working even though he's on leave. Mm -hmm. For me, that is uh, contradictory in a sense. I don't yeah. understand how somebody can be on leave while at exactly. the same time working. Mm -hmm. Me, I don't understand that. But when you also look at the vice president trip to Sweden, you will also be told that he's on official trip. Yes, yes. You know, and therefore he's still working. So basically what we are being told is that both men are not in the country, but they are still in charge and they are working. That's what we are being told by the presidents. Okay. And for me, I think... Um, that would be stressed uh, to, to, to show understanding for that would be stretching logic, you know, on his head. Mm. So let's talk about, um, you know, the priorities, right, from the government. Um, do you think this trip should have been better coordinated? Because I'm sure that they probably have like a schedule and they know what they're going to do per time. So do you think they could have coordinated this better and shown, you know, what their priorities are? And right now, the perception of the Nigerian citizens just feel like maybe you really don't care about us in these challenging times um, where we know we're going through a lot. If both of them can just go abroad, regardless of whether they are working or it's a work leave or not, what do you think that tells the people? What is the body language? Uh, to be honest with you, whether they're here or not, um, makes no, but little presence difference. matters. Yes, I don't. But it makes little difference. Well, look, we all know the issues uh, that we are facing. Faced with one. We know is the issue of the removal of subsidy, and two, we know is about the protection of Naira. If you stretch that argument to a point, you will begin to hear from the presidency that um, they were on working trips with a view to attract foreign investment into the country in order to strengthen the Naira mm. to deal with the situation. That's what you hear from the presidency. They will also make it clear that, look, what's the point in staying in Nigeria if it do not change the economic picture? You know, for the country, and therefore they've actually embarked on the trips, you know, in the best interest of the country. That's the argument they would push. But for me, um, whether Mr. President is here or not does not change the picture, you know, the economic picture, because um, the policies were uh, are implemented and are being, impl being implemented by his uh, administration. Yes. Uh, we all know what led to that situation. There's no need to overflow the fact that the mm -hmm. economy was prostrate and then a surgical operation needed to be done, which is what he has done. But the pains, you know, arising from it needs soothing. And, of course, within that context, the president being around, being able to talk to Nigerians regularly may be soothing for many people. But in reality, um, I cannot see how the president being here or um, in UK on a foreign trip or leave or the vice president will change the situation, except that we need to uh, review the policies. But that is not the situation. That is not what we have been told. What we have been told is that the policies have come to stay and therefore they can only look at um, palliatives or what has to be done, like uh, introducing CNG buses and other things, looking at salaries with a view to relieve the pains and not to actually solve the problem. So 
Uh, it makes little difference to me, honestly speaking, whether Mr. President is here. It does not change the economic picture of an average Nigerian. Mm. Well, so, I mean, it, it's just talking about the trust into the government and saying, you know, they are definitely committed um, to, to just face our challenges and we're all in it together. But let me move off tangent a bit, right? Now, we've seen um, the vice president go on a two-day trip to Sweden, obviously bilateral, trying to get foreign investors um, to come in. But we've seen a trend of that because even President Tinubu too goes abroad looking for foreign investors, even though we've not really seen anything materialize. What do you think we need to be doing? Because you've said whether they are here or not, we're, we're still in this same crisis, we're still in this same situation. And of course, they're going out there to look for help or look for aid. So what are some things that you think we need to start to implement, aside the fact that they are not here or whether they are here? What are some reforms that you think you would like to see um, that would just even help us? Because if we're talking about national challenges, it's the, the, the main thing now is how do we get out of it? The main thing now is how do we get help? Um, so what are some reforms or what are some policies or initiatives that you would love to see, whether they are here or not, um, that would be implemented to ensure that we're not in a crisis? Yes. Um, it's good they're trying to attract foreign direct investment into the country because if you look at the policies which they have implemented, uh, they are all dependent on our ability to attract the necessary foreign direct investment with a view to provide the necessary dollars, which we need. Um, but some of the things which I think are quite essential, particularly three things that needs to be done urgently. One, the federal government is addressing it, but slowly. They are not doing it at the pace which I would expect them to do it, which is the conversion of um, vehicles uh, to CNG buses. Uh, CNG vehicles from LPG. So, um, look, government has to make these available with a lot of support for people, whether it's on loan or one thing or the other, um, and then people can pay that over a period of time through um, their um, license, uh, vehicle license, when they're paying back. Um, they need to do that very urgently because you cannot have a situation where people are spending 250, 300,000 naira a month on fuel. Mm -hmm. And yet they're having 100, 120,000 naira. It's illogical. They mm -hmm. said we want to drive our workers, you know, yeah. to uh, be corrupt. So we, we should understand the need to do that urgent uh, as one of the means of um, trying to prevent corruption in Nigeria. It's important. The second issue is we all know um, uh, that we have uh, what they call. Uh, 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 food inflation. Food inflation is what is driving the index inflation in the country. Mm. So if you look at two factors are responsible for that. One is a low production of food, uh, agricultural outputs in our farm, partly due to security situation, partly due to uh, government failure to encourage or uh, invest in commercial farming, you know, or create the climate for that uh, over the years. The second factor driving it is also logistics. So the issue of um, CNG conversion will probably tackle the logistics aspect, which would uh, reduce the cost of food, uh, of um, bringing food from the farms. But at the same time, we need to embark on mass production. Because I said we bring down the cost of food, uh, life will be so intolerable for many people. And that needs to be done. That cannot be done through temporary importation of food stuff into the country. It will only kill the domestic industry, mm -hmm. like it's doing to the poultry business now. 50% of the poultry in Nigeria, in some states have closed down. National is about 35%. So that cannot be in our interest to create unemployment, destroying domestic market while creating jobs outside the country. So that is totally unacceptable. The third thing which I think um, needs to be done is to ramp up you know, the production of crude oil. And mm. we cannot do that without going, um, looking for investors in the offshore, yeah. you know, which is quite very expensive than the onshore mm -hmm. business, which many Nigerians are engaged. Again, it goes down to the multinationals. And therefore, we need to attract the necessary uh, foreign direct investment in the onshore sector with a view to ramp up production.
production of crude oil, you know, to something in the region of 1.8 to 2.5 million barrels a day mm. in order to get out of the works. Mm. All right. I mean, I like, um, you know, the things that you've highlighted, but of course, we're talking about, um, you know, national challenges now and governance. Um, how do you think we're supposed to be tackling insecurity? Because, in fact, there's a statement by the um, NSC director saying that uh, most of the weapons that are used by the bandits are actually from the federal government. And now we don't have the president here. We don't have the vice president here. I don't know what the chain of command is. But in issues like this that are arising, especially knowing what, our secure, what the state of you know, our security is in Nigeria, the safety of Nigerians, how do we even tackle that? Yeah, the, uh, to be honest, we made some progress in terms of dealing with um, uh, with um, terrorism. The Boko Haram terrorism yeah. um, has been degraded to a great extent in a way that um, we've now seen uh, the the outcome of the investment in the appropriate military equipment, particularly you know in the Air Force and the improved morale of the military um maybe thanks to the chief of army staff or mm. the chief of air staff for the massive work they've done in that area but that does not mean you solve the security situation the problem is still there when you look at banditry banditry seems to have spread you know to so different parts of the country um in a way that kidnapping uh, which is the the the, the icing in the cake of banditry, uh, you know, as we had is there, virtually in every local corner of this country. And that is not down to the military, too. I think that's down to the Nigerian police force and uh, the state security service you know, to deal with those aspects. Um, so they could, the, the banditry could be um, an offshoot of Boko Haram. It could also be a mutated form of uh, the terrorism, which they've been able to degrade. But whichever is the case, uh, we need an in increase in uh, manpower, the Nigerian police force manpower and equipment to be able to deal with this situation. Otherwise, we will not be able to uh, create the necessary environment. Farmers will not have the confidence uh, to go to farm, particularly um, in the middle belt, which is regarded as the breadbasket of the country. So uh, we, we need to focus more on that. Uh, the the president or the presidency or whoever is in charge really needs to do a lot to ensure that uh, we can improve the morale of the Nigerian police force to give them the quit the recruit the appropriate number of personnel needed you know, to deal with the increasing kidnappings in Nigeria. Thank you so much. Um... I mean, this is, where we, this is where we have to wrap it up here. But we want to say thank you. And I hope that um, the president, the vice president, the presidency, like you said, understand the critical um, issues that we have in Nigeria. And regardless of where they are, they're, they're solving it. But it would be nice, like you said, it's ideal for at least one person to be on ground just to oversee, um, have that overseeing functions and ensure that we're all, we're all working together, all hands are on deck, all hands are in the plow, and we're just ensuring that whatever we're facing, we're facing it together and we'll come out of it together. Anyways, Biodun, we want to say thank you so much for coming. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, we've been speaking with Biodun Shoumi, he's a public affairs analyst, and we've just been taking the statement from Akonde that says, um, that talked about the president and the vice president's foreign trips simultaneously at the same time. This is how much we can take on the show today. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with me. My name is Brumet Olsen. I'll see you again tomorrow, or rather, I'll see you again on Monday. Have an amazing weekend.